To the left hand side for Vieira, who will play it through to Gabriel Jesus, who's in here for Arsenal. Gabriel Jesus to finish it off. Oh, what a way to do it! Gabriel Jesus seals the points for Arsenal. He's back and he's back with a bang. Into the penalty area it goes. Gabriel Keller and it's into the back of the net. Arsenal take an early lead through Gabriel. You're listening to the Chronicles of Aguna, the daily Arsenal podcast with me, Harry Simeon. Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to another live episode of the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast, part of, of course, the 90 Min Football family. Wasn't actually planning on recording an episode today. We were planning on doing a nice long bumper live stream tomorrow for the UEFA Champions League draw. We're still going to do that, so join me tomorrow from 10.45am. We're going to take you all the way through the draw um, and then we're going to react to the draw on the live stream and we'll release the reaction part as a separate episode for those of you that won't want to watch us going through finding out our fate and we'll only want to hear reaction to it. I am in one of those little meeting. Um, I don't have a microphone with me today because uh, as I say, I didn't plan on recording anything. But of course, some big news has dropped and that is that Ben White has signed a new long term contract with the Arsenal. It is official. We're also going to talk about Gareth Southgate's claims with regards to Ben White. He says Ben White has rejected the opportunity to be a part of the England squad. He says that Arsenal, via Edu, informed Gareth Southgate's team that Ben White did not want to be considered for England squad. So we're going to get into all of that as well. Again, apologies that the sound quality isn't as good as it normally is. Um, but we're here and we're live and we're going to talk through these big, big stories. Thank you for all your uh, really kind messages over the last few days. I've really, really appreciated it. My calendar has been a bit mad because of um, sort of trying to juggle work, but also with the kind of family stuff um, that we've had going on. We had um, a, a family member really sadly pass away at the start of the week and um, that just knocked me out of it for a couple of days. I just wasn't in the mood Um to, to talk about football. I went to the game on Tuesday night, worked the game, felt a little bit better after the game. Um, but then something reminds you of it and it gets you back into that kind of zone. Um, so I am I said to myself, I was going to take it easy this week in terms of uh, the output, just to try and um, to do it at my own kind of pace. Um, we are, um, we are going to um, get back to normal now. Um, as much as we possibly can. Uh, but I just appreciate all the patience and, and I appreciate all the kind messages uh, that we've had. It was two passings, unfortunately, in recent weeks. Um, the first funeral was the funeral that I went to yesterday, which is why um, I had to pre-record the uh, Porto reaction episode and the other one's coming up at the end of the month. So, yeah, um, it's going to be a few days where I skip out uh, shows as a result of that. But listen... As I always say, football's amazing and it's really, really important to us and it gives us joy. It gives us happiness. At times it brings sadness as well, but it isn't the be all and end all. Um, and when things like this happen, I think it puts that uh, into context. So, yeah, thank you for all your patience with the up and down schedule and all the rest of it. OK, shall we begin by saying some hellos? There's plenty of you with us in the live chat. Uh, big hello to uh, Matt, who says, uh, thrilled to hear Ben White has signed a new deal. His diverse skill set and durability are paramount to the success of our defence. His shithousery is just the cherry on the top. Hope he's a gunner for life. Uh, we've got Afsar in the chat. He says, I'm glad that White snubbed England. Me too, but we'll get into that uh, in a little bit more detail. Um, Steve says, good afternoon, everybody. Fantastic news about White. I'm loving that we're protecting our assets. Uh, big shout out to Richie as well. Thank you uh, so, so much for your kind words, mate. Uh, we've got Silvio Hacker is with us. Glenn James uh, Jr. We've got Wandering Minstrel. Uh, we've got Gary Forks, we've got um, Mac, we've got so many um, brilliant people uh, in the live chat. Thank you, as always, for joining me. OK, let's go over then to Arsenal.com, where it was announced earlier today via a quite cheesy video, actually. And I know that we're going to get a lot of stick uh, for this as a fan base. I, I don't know if you've 
uh, watched it, but there was a video earlier on and it was called like Ben White told by his team told. Well, hold on. Let me find the actual caption. Um, I won't play you guys the video through because I'll probably um, get flagged up for, for copyright. But hold on. Uh, where is it? Hold on. Arsenal. There we go. Let me just go on to the official page. There it is. Ben White, uh, as told by his teammates. Let me show you. Hold on. So Ben White was basically... Oh, I've, I've selected the wrong tab again. One second. It's technology stuff. Just isn't me, is it? Uh, where is it? Where is it? No, that's the one. That's the one. Okay. So it was like a video of like his teammates. Odegaard took part. Rice took part. Jorginho took part. Uh, Vieira and Martinelli there. Uh, and a few others um, were involved in this video. And they were just talking about what Ben White's like. You know, the, the, the misperception sometimes about Ben White and the character that he is. And, you know, people look at him sometimes and think he doesn't care. Some of his comments in the past have maybe contributed to people having that impression of Ben White. But I can assure you he does care. And I can assure you that you don't play at this level week in, week out for a team and a club at this level under a coach like Mikel Arteta if you're not somebody who gives it your absolute all every time you take to the pitch. I think he's unique in terms of his body language, his attitude. Um, and look, if he says he doesn't go home and obsess over football after he's done his job, What's the problem with that? Um, there isn't really one. I, I thought at the time that the comments were maybe a little bit daft in terms of like just bringing unnecessary attention to himself and almost fueling the critics um, when that's the last thing you want to do. I mean, you play elite level football nowadays. There's enough people wanting to tear you down at every opportunity. Do you need to give a ammo? Uh, probably not. So I felt at the time that Ben White probably shouldn't have said that, but he's made a joke of it on occasion since. And I think his performances. And the fact that he's improved year on year tell you all you need to know about his work ethic and commitment to this sport. So perhaps uh, everybody should just give him a break. But Arsenal uh, announced it today. Uh, ben White signs a new long-term contract, uh, committing his long-term future for the club. It says on the Arsenal website, but since joining us uh, from Brighton in July 2021, Ben has established himself as a key member of the team, making 122 Arsenal appearances in all competitions. Ben has underlined his versatility during these three seasons in North London, having spent his first campaign in central defence before moving seamlessly into right back, where he featured in every single Premier League match last season. A 26-year-old defender is known for his significant contributions at both ends of the pitch, which have been highlighted in recent weeks with his goal in our victory at Sheffield United, the 10,000th in our history and his two assists in our two home one win over Brentford last week. He's also been a never present since the January break where we have conceded just five goals in 10 matches. Talks about the start of his career, um, spent time at Brighton, making his debut at the age of 18 before spending valuable time on loan at Newport County in League Two, Peterborough United in League One and Leeds United, where he won the club's Young Player of the Year award in the 2019-20 championship winning squad. Sporting director Edu had this to say, we are so happy to have completed a new long-term contract with Ben. Since Ben joined us, his contribution and commitment have been of such high quality. Our supporters love him, we love him, uh, and we look forward to enjoying Ben's performances with us for the years to come. Arteta said, it's great news that Ben is committing his future to the club. He's a key player for us, a top professional with a winning mentality, and one of the guys who leads by example every day. Ben's ability, determination and positive attitude are so important. But he's also a great character and human being. And we all look forward to continue working uh, with Ben in the coming years. So as always, the club haven't given us uh, too much information with regards to the ins and outs um, of the deal. You know, how much is the deal worth? Um, I'm just having a quick look at um, some of the reports that have, have come out on this. Um, but David Ornstein reported yesterday that the announcement was due by the end of the week, um, that the previous deal ran until 2026 anyway. Uh, fresh terms um, and an extension rewarding his importance. So another key player uh, retained by the football club and another key asset protected. And this is something that Arsenal have moved to do. You know, they, they have spent a lot of money over the last few years. There's no doubt about that. But they've done that knowing that this was a team that they were going to 
you know, keep the core of for many, many years to come. And so they felt it was worthwhile making that type of investment. And then by protecting all these players, it means if you do get in a spot of financial bother, you can sell one or two and get yourself out of that situation. It also protects you from the vultures that inevitably circle. And we, you know, we had these issues when we first moved to the Emirates Stadium. We were really, really good at identifying players still and bringing them in and getting them in through the door. We weren't very good at protecting those assets. Um, sometimes I wonder if we ever really did want to protect them or if it was always with the plan and the idea of selling some of these players because we did, um, you know, buckle too easily, in my opinion, in some of those negotiations and allow rivals to come in and take our players away because of our financial need for ridiculous amounts of money. So it's good that the club are doing this and we keep talking about it. Every time we hear of a contract announcement, we have this conversation and it is relevant, of course. But I think Ben White, sort of typifies what is so great about this team at the moment. The consistency. This is a guy that puts in a 7, 8 out of 10 performance every single week. The versatility of this team. This is a guy who came in as a centre-back. Lots of chat about him playing as a defensive midfielder. He's ended up playing as a right-back. He's gone from being a slightly more conventional defensive right-back to, at times, a right-back that overlaps with great frequency to, at times, being a right-back in recent weeks who has taken on that sort of mantle of moving into the middle and becoming the inverted midfield player uh, stepping in from defence. So he's shown that he can do all of those different things. He's done all of them brilliantly, professionally. Um, and as I say, his consistency levels are just outrageous. And, um, and I think he's a real big part of this team. And I have to say, I did fear for Ben White when when uh, William Saliba came back and started impressing so quickly because a lot of people had it in their head that Takahiro Tomiyasu was going to be the guy that played at right back. And then obviously Tomiyasu had lots of injury problems, opened the door for Ben White to be moved across. And in truth, ever since he took on that position, there's never been any point where it looked like Tomiyasu was going to get that back. Like Tomiyasu's unavailability certainly hasn't helped his cause. But I don't think even if he were available every week at this moment in time, Mikel Arteta would swap Ben White for him. So, it just goes to show, like, he, he came in, made a position his own at centre-back, did really, really well. Then a threat to that came in in William Saliba, who's obviously elite. Mikel Arteta moved Ben White to right-back, and he's taken to it like a duck to water. And now you've got two top players playing in your defence. And obviously that's a system thing as well, because we look at the way Arsenal play now. They like to have centre-backs at full-back. It's becoming a bit of a trend in the modern game at the moment, led probably by Pep Guardiola. Um, but yeah, just really, really pleased with this. We knew it was coming, so I'm not like, wow. Um, but obviously, it's always great when you hear that these things have got over the line. And that takes me on really, really nicely um, to another story involving Ben White. And this time, his England future. So I don't know about you guys, but for months and months and months, I've been scratching my head as to why on earth Ben White has not been included in England squads. Now, I'm not saying um, that I know what's gone on uh, between Ben White and England. We know that he left the World Cup squad in Qatar. Um, I have heard things about what went down. Um, I don't know how true they are, so it would be wrong of me to sit on a podcast and claim that this went down one way or the other, because I, I really don't know for a fact. But it's a very different story that I'm getting to some of the things that have been suggested in the media and in the press. It does, the thing that I've heard, it does involve Ben White having fallen out with a member of the England staff. But in Ben White's defence, from what I've heard, he had every right to be very disappointed and very, very frustrated. And what I kind of admire about this and love about this is that Ben White is sticking to his guns here. Now, he obviously feels like he was very, very wronged by the England camp. Gareth Southgate claims that there is no falling out. There's no problem between him and Ben White and that there's no problem between Steve Holland and Ben White. It was one of the people that it was rumoured Ben White may have fallen out with. There's no football reason. There's no logical reason as to why... You know, from a purely footballing perspective, Ben White shouldn't be in the team. You know, people talk about him playing at right back right now. He could still go into that side as a centre back and be better than every other option that they have. He should be John Stones' partner 
in that England defence. He's physical. He's quick across the ground. Incredibly um, tactically savvy. Incredibly versatile. Really comfortable in possession. And he brings a calmness to a back line that I think in tournament football is really, really valuable. So there's got to be more to it, right? Because it isn't for footballing reasons that Gareth Southgate's leaving him out. He's told us that. But what is it, Gareth, that you're not telling us? Because I find it incredibly hard to believe that a tiny little incident that resulted in Ben White leaving from the Qatar World Cup is such a big deal to him that he would pass up the opportunity to represent his nation in a tournament this summer. Ben White seems like a guy of principle and it feels like he is digging his heels in here and sticking to his guns. He wouldn't do that if there was no reason for it. It's not that Ben White can't be bothered. He's one of the most hardest working players in this Arsenal squad. You think about how hard he's had to work behind the scenes as well to adapt to different positions and playing different roles. Obviously, something has gone down. And Gareth Southgate coming out and saying what he said, yeah, it might be true that Ben White informed England. In fact, it probably is true that Ben White, via Edu or whatever, informed England that he doesn't want to be a part of the squad. But you're not telling us the full story, Gareth, and I think everybody can see through it. Everybody can see through it. And for a manager who's constantly praised for being this incredible man manager, who's built this culture within the England camp that has seen them go from pretenders to competitors in every tournament that they play in now, you know, he's got this horribly, horribly wrong. Now, he might be doing the right things now in terms of trying to put it right and in terms of trying to, you know, test the water and find out whether or not Ben White would be interested in a call up. But obviously what went down before is such a big deal in Ben White's mind that he's now gone, do you know what? I wash my hands of it. I don't really care. Not interested. Not interested. I'm going to stick to my guns. I'm going to stick to my principles and I'm not playing for England. So let's have a look what, at what Gareth Southgate had to say uh, on this, because I think it's um, it's quite, I, I would say it's interesting, but I feel like he's leaving some of the key points out. So how interesting can it be? Um, he says um, that he received a call from Arsenal's sporting director, Edu, last week to say that defender Ben White did not want to be considered for selection. In 2022, White left England's World Cup squad for personal reasons, with reports saying he'd fallen out with assistant manager Steve Holland. Gareth Southgate said this, I spoke to him post Qatar and there was reticence from his side. I don't know why that is, but I respect that. Reticence from his side. Obviously, to put it bluntly, you've pissed him off. Um, he then went on to say there is no issue between us at all. And there's also no issue with Steve Holland, which has been mentioned in articles. And I don't like that. He would be in this squad, but he's not available to us. And I have to focus on who can help us. So you've made it clear that you've had every intention of including Ben White in this squad. That Ben White's camp via Arsenal have been proactive in telling you that they're not interested. And now you realise that you are really limited in that centre-back position and you realise that people are going to criticise you if, you know, the team go to the, the Euros and fail defensively. You know, you realise that people are going to say, why the hell isn't Ben White in this squad, given how well he's playing? And you've decided to jump out and put your side across first. I would love Ben White to come out and and basically throw Gareth Southgate and his staff under the bus. I would love Ben White to come out and say what happened. Now, whether or not there was any kind of explosive moment in this relationship that's led to this breakdown where Ben White's gone, I'm not playing for you guys again. I don't know. But obviously, whatever Ben White was going through personally, and that does marry up with what I've heard. Obviously, whatever Ben White was going through personally, he didn't feel that he had the support from the England setup that he was probably deserving of. And he's not going to let that go by the looks of it. So he might not have actually had a clash per se with Southgate or Steve Holland, but he obviously feels that you haven't treated him right. And hence why he is not interested. 
and obviously you know he uses the word reticence um I'll, I'll bring up the definition for it reticence is an unwillingness to do something or talk about something for example because you are nervous or being careful ben white's not nervous about anything mate ben white isn't nervous about anything ben white knows that you know why he's unhappy and ben white doesn't think that you're worthy of the time of day hence why he is not um even entertaining these conversations or questions and hence why he's got his sporting director to give you guys a call and tell you now phil mcnulty um of uh, the bbc he's the bbc uh, sport chief football writer he said um england squad for the forthcoming friendlies at wembley is notable uh, both for eye-catching inclusions and one particularly significant exclusion he talks about the fact that calvin phillips has been left out uh, of the side as well he doesn't actually really talk about ben white in this analysis i was expecting him to um i was expecting him to but he hasn't so yeah probably because he doesn't have a clue and no disrespect to him i don't think anyone has a real clue and a real understanding of what exactly has gone on here but look that's the story um and and you know that's that's the deal at the moment let me take uh, a really short pause and then i'm going to take a load of um a load of your questions and comments on the things that we've discussed today ben white has signed a brand new long-term contract with arsenal but at the same time uh, according to gareth southgate he has snubbed england we'll be back right after this okay let's dip into um the comments section um <laughs> hacker says i have a feeling it's got something to do with the tanning <laughs> i don't know what else uh, it could be uh, says i says ben white just wants to go on vacation instead can't blame him i'd choose club over nation any day too i really don't think it's that um like ben white looks like a lad that enjoys his holidays and why not um but yeah i i, I i'm pretty sure that that's nothing to do with it but yeah maybe you know, you never know, I suppose. Uh, Steve Stone says, from a selfish point of view, I'm glad White isn't playing international football. One less possible injury to worry about. I completely agree. I, I couldn't care less um, whether he plays for England or not. I only care um, for what he achieves and what he delivers in an Arsenal shirt in red and white. Um, and so, yeah, it, it doesn't bother me. It's no skin off my nose. And I quite enjoy the fact that, as you say, Steve, we're not going to have to sit and worry and stress about Ben White's availability after every international break, like we have to do with so many other players. Um, it's, it's his prerogative at the end of the day. It's down to him. Um, and what will be really, really interesting, I think, is when Southgate and his staff move on, which we think is probably going to happen after the European Championships, it'll be really interesting to, say, to see if Ben White makes a U-turn on this reticence, if you like, um, to, to discuss... Uh, why it is that he doesn't want to be a part of the group or not. Um, if that is the case, then you know it was something to do with the current setup. If it's not, then maybe that was part of it, whatever this sort of personal reason was, and maybe the way he was supported or not during that time. Um, and and maybe that would have been the straw that broke, broke the camel's back for him, and maybe he, he doesn't ever fancy a return to the setup. We'll see. Um Sko says uh, White may well feel too good for England. He does play for the Arsenal after all. He's an odd one, but I just don't believe Southgate's wording. Something doesn't add up. Um, a few of you citing um, rumours um, that were circling about what Ben White's personal issue was during the World Cup. And you can see in the comments what people are bringing up. And just out of respect, I'm, I'm not, not going to discuss um that because if if that is something that happened um then you know it's an incredibly sensitive subject and i think it'd be wrong of us to sit on a podcast and and basically um you know yeah basically speculate over it uh temi says uh, are you aware you can cure your sore throat by sipping on some porto tears i'm not even um i'm not even moaning of a sore throat today do i sound a bit husky maybe it's because i don't have the proper microphone with me today but i am drinking porto tears here you go um, Sergio Conce sounds specifically. Uh, Lucas Hood 92 says, do you think White will regret not having much of an international career? Maybe not. I, th I guess it depends on what he achieves at club level. Um, you know, England might go and win the Euros this summer, but they're not a nation that's traditionally won trophies. 
I know that we talk about England as if it's the be all and end all, but when I think about the fact that they haven't won one since 1966, it's not like it's one of the nations where you're guaranteed to pick up major trophies and so you you maybe kick yourself down the line. Um, yeah, I think he's I think he's fine. Um, I think he's fine just doing what he's doing, to be honest. Um, Chris says, I just don't think that he cares uh, about playing for England. He said that his parents never cared about football. Good for us. Yeah, he is good for us uh, in that, you know, we don't have to worry about him picking up injuries as we discussed earlier. You know, and the thing is, you don't have to be like the biggest follower of something to be really good at it. I think it helps if you understand what it is that you're trying to achieve things in. But Ben White, you know, says that he doesn't go home and watch a million games of football. That's fine. You know, I do. I watch loads and loads and loads of football, probably an unhealthy amount of football. But Ben White's better at football than me. So, you know, it goes to show that there isn't really that correlation between the two things. Uh, but yeah, interesting. Um, Mac does say, this is a good point, um, White never had a problem with Bielsa, Potter or Arteta. Clearly Southgate was the issue. Bet you when Gareth goes, White will make himself available again. Maybe. Um, Cesar says, would it devalue Ben White if he doesn't play for his country? Possibly, slightly, but only in terms of prestige and all that stuff. You know he's a good enough player to play for England. He's more than good enough to play for England. So I wouldn't suggest that that would be too much of an issue or anything that Arsenal are worried about. Um, Evan says, are you going to watch England this summer or just not on your list? I always watch the international tournaments. Um, I hope to someday uh, get out to one and work on one. That's kind of like the dream. Um, but I just don't have... I don't feel that connection and affiliation to to England. So um, a lot of you know I'm from a Greek background. Uh, yes, I, I've grown up in London, um, but in years gone by, you were talking about an England team made up of mainly Manchester United and Liverpool players. Why on earth was I going to sit there cheering them on, especially you know when I'm from a different sort of ethnic background? Plus, there was a period where there were loads of Tottenham players in it. I just find it very, very difficult to get behind players that I'm not a big fan of basically. Um, so yeah, um, I'll watch the tournament, of course, and I'll cover it. And we'll probably do some Chronicles of Aguna stuff uh, around the tournament just to kind of keep things going over the summer whilst kind of blending that in with some transfer chat. But yeah, I'll watch it, but I'm not going to be sad or crying if England get knocked out, put it that way. Hoping that Greece uh, will qualify, but we'll see. Okay, um, guys, I am going to leave it there. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this impromptu bonus episode of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast. Remember uh, that tomorrow, if you fancy it, um, you can join me to follow the Champions League quarterfinal and semi-final draw. We're going to be live streaming on this very channel. We're going to kick off at 10.45 a.m. The draw begins at 11. Uh, we're going to take you all the way through the draw whilst discussing it as well. And then the last 15 minutes from 10.30 to 10.45, after the draw is concluded, we are going to break it all down and we're going to talk about it and we're going to react to it. And um, yeah, really, really looking forward to doing that in your company tomorrow. So set your alarms, turn your notification bells on if you're tuned in via YouTube. If you're listening on audio, that live stream will not be available on audio, but the reaction segment, the 15 minute segment, will release that as a bonus episode um, as soon as possible, as soon as we're done. Thank you all so, so much as always. And I'll catch you very, very soon with another episode of the Chronicles of Aguna. In fact, tomorrow. Until then, take care. Goodbye.